and welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Stories. I'm Anthony and today I would like you to be my fellow traveller on our shared journey to faraway lands and times. Tonight we will embark on a calm, lazy journey through the French countryside where we will meander through fields of lavender, wander through cobblestone streets, and find rest in a cosy, historic home. Before we begin, let us take a moment to relax and find comfort in the space that we are in. As you lay in your bed, safe and comfortable, gently place your hands on your stomach. When you breathe in, feel your hands rise as the air fills your lungs. Pay attention to the rhythm of these motions. The consistent rise as you breathe in, 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 and the sense of calm that follows as your chest falls again, relaxing as the nourishment of the air fuels you. Imagine each breath as a warm, orange light. As you breathe in and feel your rising chest, picture that warm light spreading through you. Feel the light as it winds through your body, melting away any tension, relaxing each and every muscle that it comes into contact with. When you exhale, imagine the tension leaving your body as your breath floats away in the air. You have no need to be rigid here, no need to carry that tension with you. Here, all you need to do is relax and let your body sink into the soft mattress underneath you. Truly feel the breath filling your lungs and the blanket laying gently on top of you. Consider how nice it is to just be right here, right now. Now that we've taken a moment to relax, let us begin our wonderful journey. It is mid-July in southern France. The egg yolk sun is high above your head a dot of yellow in a sea of bright blue sky. The air around you buzzes with a warm, vibrant energy. Everything around you is alive, basking in the glory that is midsummer. You are in Provence, a region in France known for its diverse landscapes ranging from tropical Mediterranean coasts to snowy Alps and all the vineyards, orchards and rolling meadows in between. You're riding a comfortable bike down a dirt road. All around you, the horizon is coated with craggy mountain peaks that seem to touch the sky. There are fields on either side of the road. On one is the stunning swath of green 
grass and crops of a local farmer. On the other, there are miles and miles of pasture, where woolly sheep and sun-bathing cows wander the fields. The breeze tickles against your skin as you ride over the smooth dirt road, the rhythm of your tyre rolling over the gravel calms you. But that isn't the only noise on the soundtrack of your journey. You hear the chirp of cicadas clinging to cypress trees and nestling in the soft grass all around you. Overhead, birds sing to one another in a language you wish you could understand. The land around you is idyllic, a little slice of heaven that you feel fortunate to be a part of, even if only for a little while. Up ahead, on the side of the road, a willow tree sways in the breeze, set against the backdrop of those blue-tipped mountains. It is too beautiful to simply pass by. You pull off to the side and pull a container from the front of your bike. Like a curtain, the wispy tendrils of the willow mask the thick trunk underneath. You reach your hands in, parting the sage-coloured leaves to step inside. The leaves swish at your touch, singing as they brush against one another. You settle against the tree trunk for a moment, allowing yourself time to refresh and relax before you continue your journey through the French countryside. Honeybees weave through the willow tree, the consistent drone of their buzz filling the air. You open your container and take a sip of iced tea. You feel the refreshing condensation of the glass on your fingers before you taste it. The sweet, sweet flavour of a freshly brewed iced tea on a hot summer day. The flavours dance on your tongue as they put your body at ease. You take in the scent of the willow, the sound of the branches swishing, the buzz of the bees just above your head. There are other things to see, and although this is beautiful, it is not your destination for the day. You rise from the willow cocoon and step back on your bike. Once again, you feel the rush of the fresh air against your skin. This air has brushed against mountains, through historic villages, and over the fields that you're turning towards. You know they're just over the hill. You can smell their unmistakable fragrance drifting towards you in the breeze. As the aroma surrounds you, you feel your body completely and totally relax. Your muscles lose their tension. Your hands relax on the handlebars and you allow your eyes to drift closed for only a moment. For a second, it's as if you're sailing through lavender-tinged air, weightless, joyful, at peace. When you open your eyes, you're greeted with a sea of purple. You've reached a lavender field of Provence, stretching for miles towards those blue mountains. 
purple swaths of flowers pop against the landscape. They're organized in long, slim rows that are rounded with the flowers. In between the rows, every couple hundred feet, tall oak trees stand watch, casting shade over patches of flowers, losing their leaves in the breeze. You pull over to the side of that long dirt road, under a small tree, where you dismount your bike. The smell is indescribable. The air is thick with the natural floral aroma of millions of lavender buds. As you breathe in, you feel the scent of the lavender fill your lungs, soothing you more and more with every inhale and every exhale that you take. You feel as though you are in a dream. Your gaze meanders across the swaying indigo sea of flowers, traveling lazily through the green farmland beyond, and then deep into the mountains in the distance. It's like being inside a postcard. The landscape around you has been shaped and molded by the unity of humankind and nature for generations. However, lavender wasn't always found in this beautiful valley. Nearly 2,000 years ago, the ancient Romans brought lavender to the Provence region of France. Lavender was a plant often cultivated in the dry mountains of the Mediterranean, and the Romans recognized rather quickly that this region of France would be a perfect place to grow it. Lavender requires a hot, arid climate with relatively high elevation, ranging from 600 meters to 1400 meters. Provence, which is dotted with mountain ranges and blessed with warm, dry summer days, was indeed the perfect place for lavender to flourish. And the Romans truly wanted their lavender to flourish. You see, Lavender was vitally important in dozens of cultures, spanning decades. In ancient Egypt, lavender was part of the mummification process and was often found in tombs. In Rome and Greece, the plant found several uses. It was often used to clean wounds, to aid sleeplessness and to relieve stress. Even the Catholic Church found itself using lavender, spreading it throughout the church on holy days to repel evil spirits. Our love affair with the plant has only grown over time. Today it is used in almost every culture and is found in homes across the world. Relaxing, refreshing, and soothing all who own it. But it wasn't always such an easy flower to come by. When France became the center of the world for perfume, they introduced much of the world, including America, to lavender. The desire for lavender reached an all-time high, making it one of the most expensive crops and making it incredibly hard to come by. For a time, lavender was even referred to as blue gold, because it was so desired and such a challenge to find. As you begin your meandering stroll through the pathways in the lavender, it truly does 
look like blue gold. Each tiny sprig of lavender is home to dozens of purple-blue flowers. Here, on this sunny day, surrounded by these flowers, you feel the tingling warmth of gratitude flowing through your veins. For a moment, you sit down in the dirt in between the rows. The scent of the lavender sweeps around you as the breeze winds its way through the plants. You close your eyes. For miles, there is nothing around you but these flowers, the animals, and nature itself. There are no traffic noises, no chatter from people, nothing but the sounds of the landscape playing in your ears. You key in on one particular sound, the soft rustle of the lavender as they brush against one another in the breeze. It is a soft, subtle sound, one that sends a soothing tingle down your spine. You listen to the rhythmic rustle of the plants for a long moment. You feel connected to the ground you're sitting on, connected to all the plants, connected to the moment that you are in. You savour the feeling of the sun on your skin as you rise to your feet and continue to walk deeper into these fields of blue. You have no destination in mind, no desire, except to continue feeling the wonderful sensations this beautiful region brings. Soon, the feeling of the sun on your skin fades, the colours of the flowers have shifted from a relaxing bluish purple to a deep indigo. You turn your eyes to the sky, where you see that storm clouds have made their way across the sky. The mountains in the distance seem to pop against the dark grey. The land is now alive in an entirely new way. The air is a bit heavier now, with a chill that is absolutely invigorating. You know it's coming, and the idea of it brings a soft smile to your face. Sure enough, it starts off slow. You feel a cool sensation dance across your arms. When you look skyward once more, a heavy raindrop kisses your cheek. Then the rain truly falls from the sky. It is a sprinkle at first. Raindrops dance down lazily, spotting the light dirt at your feet with a mosaic of water. It is refreshing. A cool mist washing across the land, turning this afternoon into a dreamy scene. You begin the long walk back to your bike, but you don't mind. The rain around you has brought entirely new scents to this land. There's a freshness in the air now that is entirely invigorating. You can smell the earthy ground around you, and most importantly, the lavender scent has come to a crescendo. The wet, humid air is ripe with the fragrance of the flowers around you. It's almost like being in a steam shower. You feel your eyes become heavy. The aroma of the lavender coaxing you to just close your eyes and embrace 
sleep. You walk in the rain for a long while. You watch as the rain pools on the flowers in dewy droplets. The droplets themselves appear as tiny globes of purple. Something so magical, it looks as though it is out of a children's book. By the time you reach your bike, you almost don't want to say goodbye. But the rain has begun to pick up. It falls in heavy, thick droplets, bending the lavender under its weight, pooling in tiny puddles at your feet. You hop on your bike, heading to the local village to sit the rain out. Summer storms like this normally pass as quickly as they come, and you're rather happy to have it around. You ride north on the bike path until you reach the small village of Gord. A charming, magical village, Gord is home to medieval castles and winding stone streets that date back hundreds of years. When you enter the village, you can't help but marvel at the buildings and cobblestone streets. It is truly like a fairy tale. As you meander through, the historic buildings box you in, leading you on a relaxing journey. There are no hints of technology in the town. All the electrical wires are underground, all the fences made of rocks, all the homes crafted from stone and terracotta. Old lanterns adorn the sides of buildings, shining dimly against the dark clouds. Though it is raining, the town is alive with people. Store owners stand outside of their businesses, selling their goods on colourful tables. Today is market day, where people from all over the region set up selling their wares. You ride by the sea of goods, soaking in the brilliant displays. There are art pieces of every colour, pottery and sculptures, all sleek and shiny from the rain. The smells now are not of lavender, but of food, freshly baked breads, pastries, and warm soups. You know the best way to pass the time, so you turn, gliding elegantly down a cobblestone hill, until you reach the tiny historic building at its base. You walk into the small restaurant, and the aroma of fresh baking washes over you. The room smells of flour, thyme, rosemary, tomatoes. It is vibrantly nostalgic. You imagine the business has smelled like this for centuries. Grandmothers and fathers passing down recipes to young children, teaching them to knead dough at the very counter that is in front of you. You swear you can smell every bit of the historic family recipe, sweeping through the air. Soothed by the atmosphere, you step forward and order. The restaurant is largely empty, but you still decide to sit outside on a small patio under an awning. There, you watch the rain cascade off the terracotta roof onto the stones below. You gaze through the curtain of rain at the landscape in the valley below. You see the very lavender fields you were just meandering through. They are painted across the rolling valleys below in brilliant brushstrokes. Just behind them, you see a swath of yellow flowers. 
In Provence this time of year, lavender and sunflowers bloom in unison, creating brilliant mosaics of colour across the land. As you're making plans to visit the lavender later, your server arrives. The food they place before you looks as good as it smells. There's a steaming cappuccino with a perfect dollop of foam. A simple purple bud adorns the top of the foam. A bit of lavender signaling to you that this is no normal cappuccino. Then, of course, the food. A perfect bowl of red, orange, yellow, purple and green sits before you. It is traditional ratatouille, one of the most popular dishes in this region of France. Steam wafts off the fresh vegetables, and with it, you can smell the rosemary sage bread accompanying it. The first sip of the lavender cappuccino is invigorating. The steam rises over your face freeing you of the chill from the rain. As the warm espresso spreads over your tongue, the tang and richness elicit a sigh of delight. You dip your freshly baked rosemary bread in the ratatouille and start to eat as you peacefully look down on the scenic landscape around you. As you finish your meal, the rain around you comes to an end. You thank the small store owner before you ride off again. This time, you're only in the cobblestone streets for a moment. This town and this region are full of stunning hiking trails. So you begin to ride down one. The sun peeks out from behind the clouds, splashing its bright rays across the land. The plants around you seem to perk up almost immediately. It's as if they're reaching for the sun, seeking out the wonderful warmth that is tickling your skin at this very moment. You roll over the rocks and gravel until you reach the best of both worlds, the sunflower and lavender fields side by side. The contrast of the purple and yellow is an absolute feast for your eyes. How fortunate it is that two beautiful plants managed to bloom with one another, making one another even more beautiful. The sunflowers are much, much taller than the lavender. In fact, some seem to tower over you, reaching carefully for the sun. Water droplets wind down over the leaves, falling gently to the ground just below. As you gaze upon these beautiful flowers, you hear a brand new sound, the drone of a bumblebee. It floats through the air with its fuzzy little body, like a puff of yellow and black cotton bobbing through the fresh air. It lands on the flower by a droplet of rainwater. In awe, you watch as the little bee dips down into the dewdrop, drinking the water. This time of year, water can be challenging to come by. But here, in the flower fields, the bee can get fill of pollen and of water. Satiated, the bee wanders off the flower, taking off into the sky again. You close your eyes and listen 
to that lazy drone of its wings as it disappears. Surely to go give the lavender plants behind you a visit. You continue gliding between the waves of blue gold and mountains and valleys of bright sunflowers. With the water on their leaves, all the plants shimmer as you drive by, glistening as if they've been dusted with sparkles. You take deep, satisfying breaths of the air as you pass through the last of the lavender fields. You feel your muscles relax as the soothing aroma fills your lungs. Though it is a thing of beauty, the lavender around you serves many purposes to this day. By some, it is considered to be a sleep aid, calming the body and the mind as you lay in bed, drifting closer and closer to a good night's sleep. For some, it is a tool of healing. You find yourself passing by the expansive farms of southern France once more. To your right, you spot a rather inviting sight. A cloud of white and sleek brown coats. The vibrant green field is filled with sheep and Provence donkeys. A Provence donkey wanders up to the fence, calling you over to it with brown, expressive eyes. Provence donkeys were vital to the cultivation of this region, known for being able to easily navigate rocky, mountainous terrain. The donkeys historically spent summers in the alpine peaks and winters in the dry, arid valleys. You reach out and the donkey nuzzles you with its snout. Its fur is unbelievably soft to the touch, much longer haired than most breeds. The donkey blinks at you through tufts of downy fur around its eyes. As you run your hands over the donkey, it leans into your palm, savouring the touch. Around the donkey, sheep bleat and lounge in the sun as it returns. Behind the pasture, those fields of purple lavender stretch into the distance. Historically, lavender was vital in making and keeping wool, a useful tool in keeping cloth-eating insects away from finely made fabrics. You watch as a sheep nestles into the grass in front of the lavender, its cloudy white coat popping against the purple. It closes its eyes with a yawn as it inches closer and closer to a midday nap. How wonderful it is that so many things in nature can work with one another, the water, the bees and the flowers, the lavender and sheep's wool, the donkey and human, all uniting to make life a little better. As you pull your hand away from the Provence donkey, it blinks at you once more with its big doe eyes before it wanders back into the field in search of food. You continue on your journey home, winding along more dirt roads, under even more willow trees, and, to your surprise, through more fields of lavender. The land here is like a patchwork of agriculture, dots of farmland, surrounded by rolling waves of blue gold, rocky terrain, 
peppered with cozy, sleepy villages brimming with family-owned bakeries and family recipes. Cypress trees waving in the gentle breeze on the valley floor as pine trees stand tall in the heights of the alpine mountains. It is diverse here as you ride along feeling freedom in the fresh air. You can't help but think of the rainbow of colours you've experienced, the blues and purples of the lavender, the bright yellows and browns and greens of the sunflowers, even the muted browns and the stark white coats of the Provence donkey and the sheep meandering through the fields of life. Here there is peace and wonder to be found. You're in awe of this landscape, of the people, of the culture that has been born here. A culture that was born largely because of one simple purple plant. You gaze over your shoulder one last time, taking in the sea of flowers You can still smell the soothing smell of the lavender on your clothes. As you ride into the sunset, you find yourself breathing it in, relaxing more and more and more. I hope you've enjoyed this story and that it has helped you reach a night of peaceful sleep. Please join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams.